Howdy. So we just got done with our baseball thing, right? Well, we're not, maybe not quite done yet, but we've calculated the batting average. We've displayed the, um, the answers. We've used arrays. We've gotten a variable number of inputs for our for loop. I mean, it's, we've pretty well exhausted what we can do with this program. So we're going to start a new one. Um, I call this one just for fun too. And here I have it. I put some comments. I put my name and the date. And I also um, put the code that just is a quick description of what the code is going to do. Um, so we're going to learn how to use nested for loops. Um, that's what we're going to do right now. So we all know how to write a for loop for i in range um, it's, uh, 60. Okay. So now that's a for loop. It means that anything that's indented here is going to run 60 times. And i is going to equal 0, 1, 2, three, all the way up to, uh, to 59, right? Well, what if we would put another for loop in here? Um, but remember, we're already using i, so we have to use something different in this one. So we're going to use j in range 60. Perfect. Look at that. See? So now what we have, okay, anything that's indented this far is going to run 60 times because of the i for loop. But anything that's in here is going to run 60 times anything here. Let's put a line there so we can see the... So there's... See, anything in here is going to run 60 times as well. So this is going to run 60 times. But what's interesting, this thing right here, because it's indented twice, is going to run 60 times 60 times. So it's going to run about 3,600 times, and that it runs a lot, right? What we're going to do, we're going to we're going to make a simple clock, okay? Um, because you know, it's what we have here. We're going to count the second hand because it's going to count one through sixty a bunch of times, right? It's going to count one through sixty, one through sixty, one through sixty, or zero through sixty, whatever. Every time the i is something different. So when i is zero, it's going to count one through sixty here. When i is 1, it's going to count 0 to 60 here. When i is 2, it's going to count 0 to 60 here. When i is 3, and so on. Um, so let me just finish up this code real quick. S and remember, we have to have the string because these are integers, not strings. We always need to turn our data type into the appropriate thing for the command. Uh, minute string... Uh, this is going to be i, because right, we're going to have fewer minutes and seconds. We're going to have a lot more seconds than we are in minutes. Um, so, and then seconds. Um, string. Plus. J. Okay. So, when we run this, let's save it here before it asks us to. When we run this, see, so it's going to go 1 through, six, 1 through 60 every time that i is something different, j is going to be 60 different things. And it's going to run, and it's going to give us all the minutes and seconds here, and it's going to take a while. But anyway, so remember, okay, so this, anything in here is going to happen 60 times. Anything from here indented, right, along that indent is going to happen 60 times. But anything here, with this much of an indent, it's going to get it gets the effect of both, right? So it's going to run three thousand six hundred times, and there we have it. It just finished running, and we ended up with fifty nine seconds and fifty nine minutes. So that's that's a lot of it's a lot of lines of code, right? Or it's a lot of lines of output right there. It's big file. Anyway, so that is nested for loops. We're going to talk about um, using nested for loops with arrays next time.